Grace be unto you and peace from our Lord Jesus Christ. It's a joy to worship God with you this day and every Lord's Day. Today is Communion Sunday, so you'll want to have bread or a cracker and a sip of juice or wine for later in the service. Next Sunday, we will have the option of worshiping with our live stream service at 1030 on a computer or gathering in the sanctuary with our COVID protocols, socially distanced and wearing a mask. Both ways, we worship God as God's beloved children. This week is our wonderful Wednesday program. It will be at six o'clock on Wednesday and we will be featuring the Reverend Tomas Spath, who is the co-director of the Institute for Civility in Government. This is certainly a timely topic and you will enjoy hearing the presentation. The Zoom invitation will be sent from the church office on Monday. Next Saturday, the 21st at 10 o'clock is our book group and the discussion this week will center on the beekeeper of Aleppo. For more information, please contact Ruth Askin. The Presbyterian women have historically participated in the Wreaths Across America Houston program. At first, the program was not gonna happen at all this year, so the Presbyterian women decided not to use it as a fundraiser, but now the Wreaths Across America people have decided to go ahead and, and offer that as an option. Some of you may have gotten mail about it, um, you may go to their webpage, Reese Across America, and sign up if you would like to make a donation and purchase a wreath or, or many wreaths. And the Presbyterian women will still get a $5 contribution. All of that is spelled out in the bulletin today. And if you have other questions, feel free to contact Melba Slavin. The deadline for purchasing any of these wreaths is December 1st. So thank you for this way that we can honor our veterans. And now, let us worship God. Lift up your eyes to the Lord, the exalted one, who is enthroned in the heavens. Seeking compassion, seeking grace, we look to the Lord, the giver of mercy. God welcomes us, draw near to the king of creation. We worship the Lord of heaven and earth. Our hymn this morning is, God, bless your church with strength. Friends, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. However, we know that we can trust God to forgive us when we draw close to God 
and confess our sins. So let us do that now, using the prayer that is printed in your bulletin. Let us pray. Lord, you have made us stewards of your creation and commissioned us to carry out your work using the best of the abilities you give us. We confess we do not always serve you with our best. We withhold our gifts and live in fear, failing to trust you and step out in faith. Forgive us, we pray. Because it is built on you, increase our courage. Make us bold to use our talents to show your love for the sake of your kingdom until you come in glory. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Prince, who is in a position to condemn? Only Jesus Christ. Christ died for us. Christ was raised for us. Christ reigns in heaven and Christ prays for us. Friends, hear and believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. And now I encourage you to remember to share the peace of Christ with others, the peace that we know as God's forgiven people. This afternoon, pick up your church directory and call someone that you haven't spoken with lately. Extend the peace of Christ to them. See how they're doing. Check in. Or call a family member or call someone across town or across the country. All of us are going through a hard time. All of us need to be reminded of the peace of Christ. Amen. And now let us bow in prayer. Almighty God, quiet any voice within us other than your own, that we may hear your word made fresh by your Holy Spirit. Help my words to be faithful or allow them to harmlessly slip away. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of Matthew. I'll be reading from the 25th chapter, verses 14 to 30. Let us hear together this word of God to us. For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a free thing, in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and I hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave! You knew, did you, that I reap where I do not sow and gather where I do not get scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I was 26 when my husband died of cancer. About a year later, as I was packing up my old car and getting ready to move 1,200 miles away to 
start seminary and taking my three-year-old son with me as I was going to begin the study of Greek and Hebrew and other subjects that are required for ministry, I ran into an older lady. She was a friend of my grandparents. She was a friend of our family. Our conversation went something like this. So you're going to Virginia? Yes, ma'am. And taking that baby? Yes, ma'am. You must think the good Lord is going to be looking out for you. Yes, ma'am. Isn't that what the life of faith is all about? Being faithful, trusting, risking for God's sake, being willing to step out in faith by showing love to others because of confidence in God, knowing God is faithful to us even when a pandemic rages and government norms are upended and long established holiday routines are disrupted. The life of faith is moving forward after the example of Jesus in all circumstances, giving thanks for life itself, extending love to all we meet, working for the common good of God's people everywhere. The gospel reading today is the familiar and also troubling parable of the talents. This story has so influenced succeeding generations that our very word, talent, the word that we use to describe a natural ability or an aptitude or a gift that we're born with, not something that we acquire, the word talent comes from this parable. And we talk about people being musically talented or artistically talented or athletically talented. But when Jesus tells this parable, he's talking about money. A talent in Jesus' day was a weight, and this weight was accorded a certain value. A talent in Babylon averaged about 65 pounds. A Greek talent weighed about 88 pounds. And an average worker in Jesus' day worked about 15 years to earn the equivalent of a single talent. So, the master in this morning's story demonstrates a staggering amount of confidence in all three of these unnamed people. In Jesus' story, a man about to set out on a journey, he's going to an undisclosed place and for an unknown length of time, and he entrusts his property to his slaves. Now, he's not just leaving them in charge of something that's inconsequential. They're not asked to water his garden or pick up his mail or collect the flyers that come to his door. No, what this man does is leave them responsible for vast sums of money, up to 75 years worth of wages. Now this property is not given to them as a gift, no. They are to manage it on the owner's behalf. But, and this may be surprising, the master doesn't give them any instructions about what to do with the money. He doesn't give them any investment parameters. He simply entrusts these dollars, these monies, these talents to these three people's good judgment and their industry and to see what they will do with it during his absence. Now, think back to when you were in school. I know for me, the hardest assignments were the most open-ended. It was much more difficult for me to be told to write a 500 word essay than to be told to write a 500 word essay about a particular topic, even if it was an obscure topic. Given a specific assignment, one has a place to start, one has a clue about what to do. The three individuals in this story are not told to buy stocks or to buy land or to buy seed. They're just to use their best judgment. And their responsibility is to honor the trust that's placed in them with their response. So we read the story. We see that two people get busy right away. And we see the third he quivers in fear. And then he goes and he buries the money. He misjudges his master and he takes no further action. He doesn't display any gratitude for the trust that's been placed in him. And he totally throws away the opportunity to make himself worthy of his master's trust. Now, it's true that different times, different places, many of us may share some tendencies with this third man. We may not feel up to a task and we worry, what if we're not, what if we make a mistake? 
What if our hunch or our advice turns out not to be right? Is it better not to try if we're not confident that we can meet the expectations? We might freeze in place. Rather than risk a wrong action, we take no action. All of us at one time or another may feel insignificant or unimportant or overwhelmed. We may have said to ourselves that any contribution that we might make would be small and therefore it wouldn't be missed. So we allow inertia to win. We do nothing. But such thinking is really contrary to the gospel. Because God judges us against ourselves, not against one another. Each of us is an integral part of a complex web, and each of us has something important to contribute. The master in this parable salutes attitude. The master salutes effort, the gumption to step out in faith. The people who are praised are those willing to make an effort, those willing to trust that what will be pleasing will be using all of our potential, boldly doing our best according to our abilities. Now, in any given situation, it's pretty easy to minimize what we think we can contribute. But doing so contradicts God's opinion of us, and it minimizes our acknowledgement of the vast gifts that God gives us each one. God blesses us all with many, many gifts and with the responsibility of using them in ways that glorify God. The enormity of the examples in this parable, 15 years worth of wages, 30 years worth of wages, 75 years worth of wages, prods us to take stock of the enormity of gifts that God entrusts to us. Think. God gives us life and health. God gives us minds that think and energy to affect change, creativity to produce beauty and laughter, energy to uh, affect people's lives, loves to share, ideas to explore and to appreciate. So how are we using all these gifts that are entrusted to us? Using our talents makes them grow and develop. How can we unite them to spread the good news of the gospel, to speak of hope and patience and perseverance during a very challenging time, to show love to others around us in ways that will rub off on them and their positive rubbing off on us, their love being shared with us? That's been said that it takes money to make money. This parable suggests that there's more to it than that. This parable suggests that it also takes a willingness to risk, an ability to take initiative, the courage to try. All three shepherds, all three servants, could have simply buried their master's talents. That would have been safe. It would have required no creativity and a minimal amount of effort. But it would have been poor stewardship, and it would have been a betrayal of their master's trust. Now, at the same time, it's risky to reach out in love to people who think differently or look differently or talk differently from us, but it's worth the risk. God has created us all, and we need to find ways to work together and live together in peace and in harmony and encouraging the common good. We all have something to offer others. Let's not betray God's trust. All of us know people who are blessed with potential and who fail to turn that potential into accomplishment. Can we step up and be faithful? Can we serve as encouragers to peace, steering people away from acts of anger and toward positive contributions? The infinite variety of gifts among us is cause for celebration. When we use our gifts with discipline and with the proper balance between hubris and humility, personal need and the needs of others, there is so much that we can accomplish. All of us have so much that we can contribute and we gain by giving. We are not being faithful when we devalue ourselves or when we duck in fear. God's gifts are bountiful and God calls us to persist in using them in joy and with joy. Being faithful is making the most of the life we have. 
It's demonstrating a worthiness of the trust that's placed in us by using what we have been given to its fullest potential. In our current changed climate, can you listen intently to another? Can you affirm someone with whom you disagree? Do you keep gifts of compassion, and empathy, or understanding under wraps? Squirreling away gifts wastes them. We know that muscles atrophy when they're not used. So do language skills. And the language of love is important. The language of love is quieter than angry speech, but it's more powerful. God entrusts us with love to be used in the service of God's people. Friends, God looks out from us from the beginning of our lives and beyond the limits of time. God entrusts us with a multitude of talents and the responsibility to use them wisely. The only way we lose is by not being faithful, not claiming and using the gifts that we are given to make this place a little more like the coming kingdom, the kingdom of God. For when God's kingdom come, we will all gather at table. And it won't matter how we voted or what jobs we held or whether we lived alone or as a part of a great big huge family. What will matter is our faithfulness. What matters is our trusting that the good Lord is gonna be looking out for us. And the good Lord calls us to use the love of God to sow more love, to know that, to take that risk, and to know that blessing. To God be all glory, honor, and praise, world without end. Amen. Today we affirm our faith using words that are taken from a brief statement of faith. In life and in death, we belong to God. Through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, we trust in the one triune God, the Holy One of Israel, whom alone we worship and serve. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Friends, if you are able to continue to keep up your pledge, your offerings, your tithes to the church, we are deeply grateful. You may drop your checks in the mail, you may Go by the church and drop them through the secure locked mailbox. You may go on our website and use the PayPal application there. Um, we've worked it out so we are not charged a fee if you use PayPal. Whatever works best for you. And know that we are grateful. And speaking of supporting our missions, thanks to all of you who came out this morning, well, came out yesterday morning, Saturday morning, to uh, support our day of mission with all your gifts to four or five different mission partners. We had a great time receiving gifts, and we're so grateful to all of you who were able to come by and participate in that. We're also grateful for week in and week out, the musical talents of Marilyn and Ron, and Barry giving his time to record for these services.
now hear the gracious words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavily laden. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Friends, we gather at the Lord's table. We gather to remember the sacrifice that's made for us and to anticipate the warm welcome and the great feast that's awaiting us in the kingdom of God. Let us pray. Almighty God, creator of us all, long ago your spirit moved over the waters of chaos and you brought order, filling all creation with goodness and beauty. Gathering the earth's dust, you shaped humankind in your image and breathed life into us. You named us your own and sought to live in covenant relationship with us. Despite your faithfulness, we wandered from your will and followed lesser gods. Through the prophets, you sought to correct us. And in your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you gave us the way, the truth, and the life, living bread, steadfast love, and the call to live together as one another. We praise you, most holy God, and thank you for the blessing that is ours in Christ Jesus. In his life, he modeled love. By his death, he showed faithfulness. In his being raised from death to new life, Jesus demonstrates your power and your victory over even death. As we come to this table, we remember Christ's promise to be with us always. He is with us through good times and bad, through times of health and pandemic, through glorious days, and through the storms of life. Loving God, you have poured your spirit out upon us, your people, and upon these gifts of bread and cup. As we offer our thanks to you for all your many gifts, kindle compassion in our hearts. May we live the good news you give us, uniting in service to others and in our faith to you. When the groaning of creation is turned to hymns of praise and all people gather in harmony around your coming table, we know we will sing our joy to you. Hear us now as we pray together the prayer your son taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On the night when he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And after giving thanks for it, as we have done in his name, he broke it, saying, This is my body, which is broken for you. Take, eat, all of you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after they had eaten, our Lord took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for the remission of sin of all people. Drink it, all of you, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this wine, you do proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again in glory. Friends, these are the gifts of God, given for us, the people of God. Let us receive them in joy. And now, let us bow together in prayer. God, our hope, we give you thanks. Give you thanks for you have given us this foretaste of the justice, righteousness, and peace of your promised new creation. Strengthen us with this heavenly food as we seek to serve your holy realm. Lead us to live in joyful expectation of your coming again in glory. We pray these things in the name of your Son, the Prince of Peace, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now, friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance and give you peace, both this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>